Okay, today we're going to look at uh, my Jaguar collection. Um, wanted to add something new to my collection. I was getting a bit um, cheesed off playing Tempest 2000 with a, a standard controller. Um, so I looked at my collection and I thought it would be really good to add a, a spinner for uh, my collection so it would enable me to play Tempest 2000 a bit better. Okay, so I did a bit of research and this is the standard controller. Um, nothing special, what came in the box with it. Then you add the um, Pro Controller, three extra face buttons and two shoulder buttons. A really nice joypad, but um, still not particularly great at playing Tempest 2000 with. This is my spinner controller, this is the finished article. So the bits you need is just a, the actual knob itself, a 24 pulse incremental rotor encoder, some wire and an optional switch. As of eBay at the moment, these are the parts that I particularly used on my build. And this is the wiring diagram I followed. As you can see, you've got uh, the original connections, the original joypad uh, encoder, the original switches. And basically what you're doing is piggybacking over the top of those uh, contact switches and putting the rotary encoder in line with it. First of all, you've got to drill a hole in the center of the joypad. So you take the casing off, mark the center of that hole and drill a hole straight through the circuit board and then mount the encoder. This is where I've obviously mounted the encoder in that piece of PCB. The piece of felt there is to, so I didn't want to see the circuit board underneath the knob. The knob was just a tiny bit smaller than the hole and you could just see the circuit board. So I decided to put that bit of felt just to black it out, if you know what I mean. Once we've got the encoder mounted, then it's time to identify the um, pads so what I'm doing here is identifying left and right and the earth for that left and right pads and there's optional um, connection points other people have used but I just went for that on the front on the front as you can see um, just uh, soldering the three wires to the encoder middle one is earth the left and right are obviously the uh, two outer ones two pins you see right at the bottom are for the button for the um, encoder but we're not actually going to use those so just solder the wires to those three encoder inputs just rebuilding the controller now just for testing I'd say probably about this has taught me about 15 minutes just to uh, drill the hole and mount the, the encoder and do the wiring it's not Particularly um, difficult at all. It's probably one of the easiest modifications I've ever done. Um, I was quite surprised how easy it was. That's the uh, joypad side all back together. So we just uh, that little green looking bit of tape just on the encoder. I was a bit concerned initially that uh, it was going to catch and, and cause a short. So I put that little piece of insulation there. But in, later on, I did remove that because I realised that it, it wasn't necessary. It wasn't touching, so I didn't use that. Just put in the the controller back together. It's forgot me a bit of felt. I did find that there wasn't a massive amount of stuff online for this, and there were, there were a few tutorials um, that were a bit vague. So um, luckily, this mod wasn't particularly strenuous. I think the, the hardest bit was just choosing what type of knob to use and what was I going to get the right encoder. But uh, everything was pretty straightforward together one thing I did come across obviously when that's back together I found that the uh, where the original d-pad support was the um, casing was going to catch the back of the encoder so I did have to trim some of the plastic from the original mount on the back of the uh, on the back case so just a little bit of trimming on there and then that back back, back bit went on quite nicely so uh, we could start putting it up and get it ready for testing Is the finished unit quite pleased with it really I think uh, the parts I've chosen and uh, and obviously and all that seems uh, quite nice some people have mounted the encoder in other places there is an optional switch as I mentioned in the um, wiring diagram some people mount it to the back some people to the side and have the optional switch I thought that looked a bit ugly myself and I'd got a spare controller so I decided to take the place of the d-pad and have it as a standalone specific unit for just plain Tempest so uh, here we go, this is uh, absolutely working perfectly. I can't believe how good, you know, why Jaguar themselves or, you know, Atari themselves didn't um, produce a controller for this. 
it definitely would have sold. Um, it makes the game a thousand times more playable. Um, you know, it, it uh, really helps it go with the arcade, if you know what I mean. You know, the, the, the D-pad just didn't suit it. You either needed a track ball or a spinner. Like you say, it's a, in the arcade it did have that, so it was a very good game. All in all, I'm uh, pleased I've done it. It's nice to add it to my collection. I think that uh, I'm going to have a lot more time spent playing this game now that uh, I feel I can control it better and it, it seems easier and more intuitive to play. And I uh, didn't, hadn't realised how good a game it was. I think because the control system was a bit naff, I think it did uh, it did put me off playing it. So now I've got a decent controller. I think I'm going to intend to play this a lot more. Such a simple premise, but uh, what a cool game to play. There's not many games that can be this basic and can be so addictive and uh, cool to play. I think this has to rank as probably one of my uh, top five now Jaguar titles. Just to mention, there is a um, you do need a standard controller with this. When you enter the, the uh, Tempest game, it doesn't support this controller. You have to go into the menu by click, having two controllers plugged in, pressing pause on both, and um, then a different options menu comes up, and you can um, then change the controller type from a, a standard joypad to a rotary, because it won't work straight out of the box. Um, it is something that you have to actually enable for Tempest, so it's not something that you can use on other games. It has to be enabled specifically. So there you go, there it is. My uh, Atari Jaguar Spinner Controller. Thanks very much for watching, and uh, we'll catch you again in the next one. Bye for now.